James and Rita is uh, a perfect introduction to our next guest. Now, last Wednesday afternoon, the West Australian Liberal Party candidate, Andrea Tokaji, was out campaigning in the Perth seat of Baldivis for the upcoming state election in March when she got a phone call out of the blue. It shattered her life. Andrea was born in communist Romania under the mad dictatorship of Ceausescu. Her parents immigrated here and Andrea's first taste of Australia was the Villawood Detention Centre. But she and her parents didn't mind. It was worth every hardship to have escaped a land like Romania, where the party decided what you were allowed to think. And of course, the only way to become a member of the party was to never dare question anything. Andrea had arrived in a land where freedom of expression and free speech were the most highly prized of values, or so she thought. Andrea grew up in Sydney and went on to become a human rights lawyer, a devout Christian, and a passionate defender of freedom, and also she would go about, about writing various opinion pieces. When she moved to Perth, she became an active and popular member of the Liberal Party there, the State Liberal Party. Last year, she was pre-selected for the seat of Baldivis in Perth's southern suburbs, a supposedly safe Labour seat. Andrea has since worked tirelessly, campaigning eagerly for the March 13th election. Then on Wednesday came the phone call. It was from the recently installed Liberal leader, Zach Kirkup, seen here on his Twitter page, proclaiming that West Australia is and always will belong to Indigenous Australians, and I guess, by logical extension, that no West Australians other than Aborigines have any right to own any of that land. Perhaps wealthy West Australian Liberal Party donors might like to ponder what Mr Kirkup's stance means for their property portfolios should he become Premier in the March election. The likelihood of that happening is fairly remote, but it became even remoter on Wednesday afternoon when Zach Kirkup and his advisers picked up the phone and deselected one of their hardest working candidates. She's a woman, a lawyer, an immigrant and a fighter for free speech. The reason for booting her out, for disendorsing her? Back in April last year, Andrea had written an article for the conservative website Cauldron Pool warning against the loss of freedoms that were occurring because of the pandemic. Are our fears of the virus undermining our freedoms was the headline of the lengthy piece. Have Australian lawmakers gone too far in restricting our freedoms in the name of protecting us from the virus, she wrote. Good question. Given Andrea's upbringing escaping the terrors of communism, it's not surprising the article was ferociously critical and suspicious of the clandestine activities of the Chinese Communist Party, as Rita was just referring to. And the article drew on many strands of what was still back then an unfolding horror story, from the revelations about Chinese groups buying up all our medical supplies, the revelations that although the Chinese government closed internal borders, it let people from Wuhan fly all over the planet, to the broader themes of the UN's Agenda 21, Huawei, and so on. And then Andrea made a fundamental error. She dared to ask a question about the safety of 5G and asked specifically whether 5G technology was somehow linked to COVID-19. Now, I have no idea if 5G is dangerous or not, but I don't have a problem with people posing the question. 20 years ago, remember, we were all holding our mobile phones out here because we thought we were going to get brain cancer. But what I do know is dangerous is when a so-called liberal party based on principles of individualism and the scientific method of skepticism goes around digging up obscure comments or words from the past and punishing loyal hard-working people for daring to ask politically incorrect questions and then casting them out without giving them the chance to explain themselves that is dangerous that is cancel culture that is how socialist and collectives, collectivists behave, not genuine liberals. Somebody brought the offending paragraphs to, the, to their attention and the bedwetters within Zach, Zach Kirkup's office and the opposition leader himself panicked and dropped Andrea like a bowl of Wuhan bat soup. 
Worse, they allowed her to be labelled a conspiracy theorist, which quickly became, in the hands of the ABC, a dangerous conspiracy theorist. A woman who has fought tirelessly for human rights and against human trafficking and was in the middle of campaigning for families in Baldivis, suddenly an outcast. Andrea Tokaji joins us now. Andrea, how did you feel on Wednesday when the phone rang and Zach Kirk up in a room full of lackeys dumped you? To be honest, I was a bit of, in a bit of shock, obviously. Uh, I didn't quite comprehend what the issue was uh, because this, again, was an opinion piece. It was written in April, uh, well before I was pre-selected. And obviously it was not said in my capacity as a candidate. Uh, and I, of course, uh, one of the reasons I joined the Liberal Party was because of their beliefs uh, and upholding the tenets of freedom of speech. So, yeah, shock, definitely. I believe you have an exclusive announcement to make here this morning on Outsiders, Andrea. So this morning I'd, I'd like to announce that uh, given the circumstances, um, this is not what I planned at all, but uh, I will make the best of it and I will not stop fighting for families in Baldivis. I will not stop fighting for freedom of speech. And on that, I will be running as an independent candidate for the seat of Baldivis this state election in Western Australia. Rita. Look, I understand that this piece you wrote was 3,000 words and, and, and a lot of it was from the heart, but I've got to take you to task about, you know, whether you're posing the question or whether you're making the claim, connecting 5G with COVID is just in conspiracy theory area and, and it, it discredits the rest of what you say. Have you changed your mind about that or do you still think there is some sort of a connection there? Oh, look, we can always second guess ourselves when we have opinions um, that uh, the facts are still unfolding before our eyes. The fact is, in April, every reasonable person had so many questions on their minds. And, of course, the heart of the piece was about the encroachment of government regulations on our freedoms and rights of movement and, and freedom of association as well. So, really, the question was posed because uh, the, there was a lot of information out there about it at the time. And so I thought incumbent uh, upon myself and community to have this conversation and obviously that's what I was trying to do. But you don't think that actually cheapens what you say? Because there were so many good arguments to be had about people's liberties and rights being decimated during this pandemic and the, the lockdowns and, and the consequences of that. There were a lot of good arguments against that and, and you made some of them. But then when you bring in 5G and uh, ideas about radiation destroying um, human immunity. Uh, don't you think that actually discredits the rest of it? I know it could have just been one or two paragraphs out of a 3,000 word piece, but that's yes. what people are going to focus on. Yeah, and look, to be fair, uh, even scientists and um, medical professionals uh, do not know uh, how much technologies these days are going to uh, affect us into the future. So these are still unknown factors in terms of the effect on our health and everyday living. Uh, you're but, right, but yes, it's not connected to COVID. There's not connected to COVID. I mean, yeah, you're right. We don't know the full impact of, of technology, but yeah. there's no suggestion that there's a connection between... 5G rollout and the incidence of COVID. Can, James. Can I just, just ask you, um, I'm curious, you, the paragraphs that you wrote here, you said that plants around 5G towers are dying, birds are falling dead out of the sky, and they're causing daily nosebleeds for those living next to the towers. You also say that the radiation emitted into the airwaves is attacking our immune systems and our motor neuron functioning. Now, I've seen a number of studies about 5G. None of them have suggested any of these things, but I have heard people say this about everything from normal mobile phones to Wi-Fi to microwave ovens, and none of these things ever come to pass. Can you understand why the party would be concerned about somebody having views that might sound, you know, t to be honest, a bit more sort of, you know, nimbin than uh, than uh, the <laughs> Liberal Party? 
<laughs> sure, I take your point. Uh, but the fact remains that there was no due process uh, in this whole saga. So the question was not posed to me, do I still hold those views? Uh, do you? You know, there was mm. no conversation about that. And the, I was just disendorsed. And do you still hold those views, though? That, well, I don't think I ever held those views. I was posing the question. Uh, because there was information out there about it. So it's not, it's not about whether I held those views or not. It's about the freedom to ask the question. And that's what I was trying to do in the piece. I couldn't formulate, to be honest, I'm not in a position to actually formulate a, uh, an opinion on that because I'm not a scientist. I'm not a medical professional. Uh, but I thought it incumbent upon community, society as a whole, in that moment, in April, to ask the question at least. So I'm not a medical or scientific professional to be able to come to that conclusion. But there was no due process. Uh, my name and reputation was defamed uh, in the process of this folding, unfolding. And of course, uh, it appears that the Liberal Party have chosen not to stand up for freedom of speech in the process. You see, I find it fascinating because both James and Rita have focused on the uh, question of whether you held those views or whether you didn't hold those views, which, to be uh, fair to you, Andrea, uh, I think both Rita and James, are, as journalists, are absolutely uh, in, within their rights to ask that question. But equally, I don't really see how it's so critical that one paragraph from, uh, you know, how, nearly a year ago uh, is, gets in the way of everything else you have done. You're a human rights activist. You have campaign against or you work to stop human trafficking. Tell us the things about you that uh, you think the, electorates about, the, elect the voters in Baldivers would be voting for. For the last 20 years, I have advocated for vulnerable people. So that includes young people with mental health issues, those with disabilities. And then I shifted my career from that kind of therapy, therapeutic uh, um, youth work to um, legal human rights. So in that space, I advocated for those who've been trafficked in the Australasia region, those exploited, making parliamentary submissions and becoming a lobbyist. I, you know, during that time worked for the Attorney General as a lawyer. Uh, I also worked with refugees in detention centres uh, on Christmas Island and other places. So it is very sad that all of my work has been discredited because of one sentence, one question that I've asked. And I hope that people out there understand uh, that my intention, my heart, is to ask the tough questions. And if I am elected, I, you will be assured that I am a politician, a parliamentarian, who is not afraid to ask the hard questions, who's not afraid to track down the truth and a seeker of truth, and to uh, pursue the truth as well. Because, unfortunately, I think in our society, we've uh, compromised on... Um, seeking the truth because we just listen to the um, headlines, you know what I mean, instead of digging a bit deeper. Rita? Um, look, I, I take what you're saying and I'm not in any way questioning all the great work you've done up to this point and I acknowledge that the left give a bit more latitude to their candidates to stuff up. I mean, Linda Burney got up in Parliament and I think said mm -hmm. that... Indigenous people were considered flora and fauna, which is an absolute falsehood that she should have been aware of. But, you know, that's not brought up to discredit everything else she has said since then. But I think conservatives like to hold themselves up to a high standard. So even if you've got all this positivity that you're bringing, all these good questions you're, you're, you're posing, if you start playing in, in, in areas of conspiracy, um, then that's going to, uh, to scare people. Uh, and I, I'm just, um, I'm just, but yeah, Rita, I'm, I'm, don't, I'm don't, a little don't bit accept, concerned. Don't you, don't you accept the point, Rita, that this label of conspiracy, they do it to Craig Kelly the whole time, they do it to me the whole time, oh, a conspiracy theorist, simply because you ask an awkward or uncomfortable question. And that label is used. The left use these labels. And uh, Andrea's from That's right. Romania, you know, Ceausescu, all that lot. They use these labels, and those labels stick like glue. Uh, James, you're sighing heavily there, so give us your well, thoughts. I just am just wondering, you know, and I hate to talk about 
you know, the party, but it would seem to me that, you know, <laughs> yes, that people have free speech, but the party also has a right to go into an election deciding who is going to be representing it. And, I, and I'm just wondering if you understand why they would be concerned at a higher level, whatever anybody thinks about Zach Kirkup and his, um, and his leadership, that a candidate who comes out and starts saying things about 5G causing nosebleeds and a lot of other stuff that is fairly out there, let's just call it that, um, is going to be a distraction for the party as they try and defeat the McGowan government and that there is maybe a, a higher cause here that, uh, that perhaps you know, needs to be kept in mind. Sounding, just... sounding like a party operative there, James. <laughs> very quickly, Andrew, your response, then Let's we've got to leave it. Let's be very clear. Let's be very clear here. I did not say these things in my capacity as a candidate for the Liberal Party. I said them uh, as a free citizen and I posed a question. I made no uh, definitive claims. So there's a huge difference there. Once you're endorsed by the party, you tow the party line. You come under their principles, policies, announcements and you go with it. And that's what you stand for. And that's what I did relentlessly for the last five months during my campaign with the Liberal Party. Not once did I bring up anything controversial because I understood how the game is played and yet I was still persecuted. Andrea Takaji, it's up to the voters of Baldivas next. And on March 13th, we look forward to seeing what happens. Thanks so much for coming on Outsiders today. Thank you. Coming up, snow in the Sahara. Must be ice.